Hi, I'm Tamara Keith, and I've been doing some research about our 16th president, Abraham Lincoln, and about his taste in music. I'd like to tell you a little bit about the music that was popular when Lincoln was around. Abraham Lincoln is thought of as one of America's greatest presidents. He led the nation through the Civil War and signed the Emancipation Proclamation, bringing an end to slavery. He's known for the Gettysburg Address, for growing up in a log cabin, being tall and wearing a top hat. But what's less well known is that he loved music, and the role music played in his life can give us a better sense of Abraham Lincoln the man. He was born in 1809. That's 50 years before the first sound was ever recorded. In Lincoln's era, music wasn't something that you listened to on your iPod. Chris Valillo is a musician and a folklorist from Illinois, and he's a Lincoln buff. There were no CDs or vinyl records or even player pianos when Lincoln was alive. They hadn't been invented yet. Music was something that was participatory. Uh, It involved people, and you joined into it. Everything was done live. So if you wanted to hear a song, you needed to find a band, or a friend with a piano, or at least someone who could sing. Doug Jimerson is a singer and musicologist who has studied the music that Lincoln enjoyed. He says that when Lincoln was a little kid, maybe eight or nine, he would go to these things called play parties, where all the kids would sing and dance. And even at that age, Lincoln's love of music was apparent. According to uh, the stories of his friends, Lincoln was the one who stomped the loudest and clapped the loudest and uh, jumped around the most and probably flirted the most with the girls. So he was quite a character as, as a kid, and he was tall and lanky, and so it must have been pretty funny to watch. Enthusiastic? Yes. Musically gifted? Chris Valillo says not so much. The accounts that I have heard indicate he was not necessarily a good singer, but was an enthusiastic participant, if you will. When he became president, though, uh, he would never, ever sing again in public. You might say that for Lincoln, music provided a release. He sought out music that matched his moods, and his moods were all over the place. Uh, He took great joy in uh, the comedy or minstrel songs of the era, and yet he also was uh, deeply moved by some of the more sentimental pieces. Um, He had an extremely strong bond with music. He was a very emotional person, extremely emotional, and he really showed his emotions. And when songs were sung for him, he would show his emotions. People who lived during his time writing about Lincoln said that they saw him cry, you know, on such and such occasion uh, because of the music. Lincoln developed a special and unlikely connection with a song called I Wish I Was in Dixie's Land. These days, it's usually just called Dixie. And it has a very different meaning than it did when Lincoln first heard it in 1860 while campaigning to become president. He went to a show in Chicago, and it was a comedy. And one of the songs they played was brand new, had never been heard by anybody. Dixie was written by a musician from New York, but the story the song tells takes place in the South. When the song came out, there was a huge rift growing between the North and the South over the issue of slavery. By the time Lincoln took office in March of 1861, the start of the Civil War was just weeks away. Dixie took on a new significance when the Confederate States of America, the South, adopted it as an unofficial national anthem. But when Lincoln first heard it, Dixie was just a comedy number. It's really a very silly song. It's about a love affair, and it's five verses of this silly stuff about this crazy romance that doesn't go so well. 
And it, it most people don't think of it that way, but it's a love song. Dixie is a fascinating song because on one hand, everyone knows this is the Southern call to arms. We hear it to this very day, sung as a sacred tribute to the South. But Dixie actually was not a Southern song. He laughed so hard and was so excited about it, he jumped to his feet, clapped his hands. And he loved it so much that he was heard to shout out, let's hear it again, boys, let's hear it again. He was just so excited that he stopped the show and they did the music over. And that is the way he reacted to music. He reacted with a lot of passion. Fast forward four years. More than 600,000 people have died in the Civil War, America's bloodiest conflict by far. The Confederate general leading the war effort for the South surrenders. The war is essentially over. A crowd gathers around the White House wanting the president to come out and speak. And uh, when he comes out, what he says Uh, And the way he addresses the crowd is with music. Lincoln often brought musicians into the White House to perform. So it isn't a surprise that on a momentous day like this, there would be a band around. Lincoln asked the band to play Dixie. And he said, you know, it's our song now, you know, as, as though to say, it's, you know, it's for everybody. And he does this. As, a, as an act of reconciliation with the South and welcoming the Southern brothers back into the, to the family of the nation. Oh, I wish I was in Dixie, away, away, in Dixie land, I'll take my stand. Of course, it took a lot more than a song to bring the nation back together. Even to this day, Dixie is closely identified with the South. Abraham Lincoln, on the other hand, is remembered as a man who ended slavery and saved the Union. And some historians believe his love of music helped carry him through the darkest days of the Civil War. This is Tamara Keith for Arts Edge, a program of the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts. For more on Lincoln and music, visit us on iTunes or our website at www.artsedge. That's A R T S E D G E dot Kennedy dash center dot org.